This is the Lock Picking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is a first prototype of a lock conceived by Urban Hawk that I think will prove to be very pick resistant once it's finalized. Unfortunately, those who made this prototype misinterpreted his design specs and produced a pretty ordinary lock, albeit one with great bidding and some warding that should prove to be pretty challenging. Now we didn't realize that this wasn't made to his design specs until after I received the lock, but with a very small change, which should be in the next prototype, probably one or two months out, I think this is going to be very hard to pick. But I'm not going to say what that change is. Urban Hawk wants to keep that under wraps until we have an accurate prototype that's been tested. However, I will give you a hint. In all of these locks, the number two pin is going to be very, very low as it is on this key right here. That's a key component to the system. I'll leave it at that, but if you do have a guess, put it in the comments below. I won't confirm or deny your theories, but maybe in a few months, once everything is public, we'll revisit these comments. Now, while I've got this key out, it's worth taking a look at because this is a very, very unusual key. It was prototyped. I believe the blade was made via 3D printing and sintering, and the bow is actually milled out of a piece of brass. You can see the blade actually goes all the way through the bow. If you look at the back, you can see the key profile right there, and everything is pinned together right in the middle of the bow. It's a pretty cool little object, and I would love to see the process that made this. In any case, what we have right now is a pretty nice cylinder with great bidding and a wicked keyway. So let's see what we can do to pick this guy open. We're gonna put it in the vise. Let me pull it over here. Okay, let's center this for you. And the first thing we're going to do is put a tension wrench in the bottom of the keyway. Now I'm not actually using this to pick. What I'm doing is using it to protect the bottom of the keyway from being damaged by my pick. For tension, I'm going to use top of the keyway tension with this tool from the Peterson Flat 5. And the pick I'm going to be using is this number five hook in 15 thousandths. Now this is a pretty tough keyway to navigate so if you're wondering how I get through that warding, I recommend you take a look at my video number 82 entitled How to Pick Locks with Paracentric Keyways. I'll leave a link in the description below, but it should take you through how I am getting through what appears to be a very difficult set of warding. Okay, let's get some tension on here. And pin number one feels like it's binding. Got a little click there. Pin two, nothing there. Number three, there we go. Got a little click out of three. Number four, definitely binding. Got a click out of him and a false set. Number five, definitely giving us some counter rotation. Mm, but he is not setting, there we go. I think, yep, we got number five set. Moving on to six. And we got it open. Okay, so this is something you probably won't see me doing once Urban Hawk's little trick is incorporated into this. But for now, let's take it apart and see what's inside. Okay, we're gonna try to only gut one side of this. So what I'm going to do is flip the core around where the bottom of the keyway is up at the top. Then I'm gonna need a pinning shoe, but before we do that, let's try to remove this C-clip. It's a little bendy one. I think we might have that bent enough to take off. There we go. Okay. 
Now let's get this pinning shoe in here. And we should be able to pull this core out. Let's get this follower in here so we don't drop any pins. Okay, now let's drop these key pins out. Okay, looks like they're all standard. All of them have little, little bits of tapering on the very top. I'm told by Urban Hawk that was not in his specs either, so hopefully the final product will not have that. Probably made picking a little bit easier for me. Okay, now let's get the driver pins out. Okay, one is a standard steel anti-drill pin, I believe. And let's get that spring out. Looks like a stainless steel anti-tangle spring. It's actually a premium spring. A short standard pin in slot two probably not able to fit anything other than a really short pin in there, given how low cut the key pin is, meaning very, very long. Number three, I think we got a lot of counter rotation on while we were picking, and that is a spool. That spring is being a little bit shy. There we go. Standard pin in slot four. And again, a spring that's given me a little bit of trouble. Unfortunately, with the uh, I just dropped a bunch of pins. Let's see what happens. Two spools in the back, so no way of confusing them. And let's see what we can do to get the rest of the springs out. I'm pretty sure they're all the same. Okay, not my prettiest gutting ever but we got everything out in a reasonably organized way. Okay, looks like we have all standard key pins. We have a steel anti-drill pin in slot one, and it looks like there's also some anti-drill, a steel pin that goes right down the front of the pin stack on the Bible for drill resistance. Then we have a standard pin in slot two, which is a zero lift pin. So I'm not even sure you need a driver pin in there technically, but good they put one there. We have a standard pin in slot four and the other three driver pins are spools. Okay, let me give you a close up of all of this. Again, all standard key pins, a anti-drill pin in slot one, standard pins in slots two and four, and three driver spool pins in slots three, five, and six. Moving over to the core, you can see that that nasty little keyway, we did manage to get through it though. And it'll be very, well, no more hints about, about what Urban Hawk's little trick is. You guys are gonna have to wait to see it. What I will tell you though, is that I doubt I will be picking it anywhere near this fast if I'm able to open it all once he gets his, his prototype built. So that's probably a month or two out, like I said before, but look forward to it on this channel. That's all I have for you today. If you do have any questions or comments about this, at least questions I can answer, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.